the next guy I want to talk about, his name is John Scotus Eriogena. And John Scotus Eriogena, his name actually means John the Scotsman Scotman. Uh, remember, or the Irishman's Irishman. But back then at the time, Ireland was Scotland. It was the land of the Scoti, and they went and invaded Pictland, which is to the north of modern-day England, which later becomes known as Scotland. So he's this 8th century monk, 9th century monk, Irish monk, best Greek scholar in Europe, or Western Europe, and the emperor of Byzantium, which was the Eastern Roman Empire, sends him a copy of um, Dionysius the Areopagite. Okay. And who was that guy? Who was Dionysius the Areopagite? Remember Mars Hill? I was telling you about Paul went to Mars Hill and was arguing with the <coughs> Stoics and the Epicureans. Well, Dionysius was one of the people there that became a disciple of the apostle, and he wrote this book. Later, it was realized because of anachronisms, figures of speech, grammar. It could not have been written by a first century person. Now you can say, oh, higher criticism, don't listen to them, Blackburn. But the church in general acknowledges this was probably written more around 250 AD, but it's probably coming from the tradition, like the pseudepigrapha, of people who knew Dionysius and they wrote down what he said or what he taught. It wasn't meant to deceive, be, to be like, oh, we found this ancient writing we just wrote last week. I think it was meant more of like, we are accurately, to the best of our ability, representing the teachings of Dionysius the Areopagite. So normally, if you want to Google it, you can get a copy online. If you've never read it, you will not find anything like this in modern literature. I would highly recommend it. But it's called Pseudo Dionysius. Pseudo meaning false or not true name. But Dionysius the Aeropagite in this book, he has wedded Christian theology with Neoplatonism. So that whole great chain of being thing I told you about, and if, if you don't remember really quickly, we've got God, the Demiurge, <coughs> spirits, Humans, animals, plants, minerals, all the way down to non-being or nothing. Here, God is pure being or all being. John Scotus, in reading this work, it like completely blew the top off of his mind and his understanding of God and the scriptures. And so... He begins to talk about, he writes a book called The Divisions of Nature. And the first division is that which is not created and creates. The second division of nature is that which is created and creates. The next is that which which is created and does not create, and finally, that which is not created and does not create. Okay, this is where it's gonna get really freaky. So this corresponds to this. This corresponds to this. It could also be like the Platonic forms or like Sophia we read in the Old Testament who God used wisdom to create the world, kind of like a personification of wisdom, unless you believe that's the actual thing. All of these categories go here, and then finally, non-being goes here. What's interesting, though, is that this equals God, and this equals God, which means this is this. So God is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the source of all light, life, and being, and it radiates out from him like a cosmic fountain, and it flows, 
until he returns unto himself. And so you have this perpetual cosmic loop and God is at the beginning, in the middle, at the end, and everywhere in between, which means we, it's part of like that emanation piece where God is just literally almost like recycling himself and we are a part of that process. God is manifest and moving through creation in your manifestations. Do any of you know what the geometric shape of a torus is? If you remember when we talked about the Stoics and the Big Bang, how they believed it would, everything would explode, but then it would contract back within itself. Oh yeah. Expansion, contraction. This is sort of the same model, but it's it's more like a loop. Instead of a rubber band, it's like a loop. And that's what a torus is. It's a perpetual, the inside is the outside, and the outside is the inside. This is pretty much what I believe the universe looks like. Woo! There's our cosmic loop. John Scotus Erigena.